In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the TI-84 to compare quadratics to some situations where we're going to be making the quadratic narrower or wider by multiplying the inside of the parentheses by a number, shifting your graph left or right, and also this last problem is a little bit different from the ones you might have seen in the past. So three new types of problems. Let's take a look at the first one. The graph of f of x is equals x squared is shown on the grid. So this is the graph of f of x equals x squared. Which statement about the relationship between the graph of f and the graph of g of x equals 2x squared is true? First I'd like to point out that we have two different functions here. We have f of x and we have g of x. And we're going to be comparing the two functions. If you notice f of x is equal to x squared, and g of x is equal to 2x squared, but the 2x is inside of parentheses. To compare the two functions, what we're going to do is grab our calculator, and I want you to turn your calculator on and go to your y equals screen. And I've already got them typed out. Let's go ahead and type them out. The first graph we'll call y1. So we're going to call f of x y1, so y1 equals, and then I'm just going to type x to the second power. For the second function, g of x, I'm going to call that one y2. So y2 is going to be parentheses. It's important that we put the 2x in parentheses exactly like the problem. So parentheses, 2x, close parentheses to the second power. So I've put the first equation in y1, the second equation in y2, and now what I'm going to do is go to the graph and compare the two. Also, if you want to be able to compare the two and kind of tell the difference between the two lines, you can make the first line, y1, a regular line. If you press the left arrow key until you are blinking on top of the little line next to the y2, if you press enter on top of that, it makes the line darker. And then you can hit the graph button. And our first line, which is x squared, is right here. And our second line, which is 2x squared, is right here. And you'll notice 2x squared looks like it's a little bit narrower than x squared. So, ooh, that's a good question. Which one's f and which one's g? I have to stop and think about it for a second. Okay, the first one we graphed was f. I'm going to call that the first graph. It's the wider graph. So f is going to be wider than g. So it says g is narrower than f, and this is true. So g is not as wide as f, yes. The graph of g is wider than f. That's not true. The darkly shaded parabola or u-shape is definitely not wider than the other. They're not ones, not two units above the other or below the other, so c and d can't be the correct answers either. So A must be the correct answer for this particular problem. Let's take a look at our second problem of the day. This problem says we have quadratic functions Q and W. And they're going to be graphed on the same coordinate grid. So we're going to put them on the same graph and compare them. The vertex, remember the vertex is the point. So if you draw a parabola, the tip of that parabola, the turning point, is called the vertex. So the vertex of graph Q is 18 units to the right. That's going to be important. Q is 18 units to the right of W. So if we drew a graph, I'm just going to sketch this real quick to get a, get a good idea just in general what that's going to look like. Let's do Q in blue. So if Q is 18 units to the right of W, well, if w, let's do w in green. If w were here, that's x squared, then q, which is to the right, would have to be way over here somewhere. 18 units to the right. So we're going to graph both functions. And we're going to have to go through the answer choices, a through e, and find out which one makes w, or excuse me, q, 18 to the right of w. So let's call all of our q's y1. y1. 
dot one. And let's call all of our W's Y two because we're going to type these in our calculator here in a second. Y two. Let's grab our graphing calculator and let's try the first answer choice. Let's see if it makes it eighteen units to the right. Eighteen x squared and ooh my cursor was on the wrong one. 18x squared. And on the other one, let's go press the down arrow key, clear x squared. Hit the graph button. There's the first one. There's our second one. And they are definitely not to the right of. So it can't be A. Let's do B. B is x squared plus 18. And trying to get rid of that. There we go. X squared plus 18, and y2 is still x squared. Okay, so let's graph that. There's our. F well, there's just one graph on the graph. Well, that's a little bit weird. I wonder what's going on. Well, all we see is one graph, and the other one isn't showing up at all. Well, since we know this is this little graph right here. We know that's x squared, and we could kind of test that out. But this graph, this little parabola right here, is going to be x squared, and we need to go 18 units to the right. Y'all, this calculator doesn't even show a window that's 18 units to the right. So I need to change the window. I press the window, and my x max needs to go at least 18 to the right. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go 20. Okay, so. There's x squared, and there's no graph 18 units to the right. So this one's a little bit funny. I'm not exactly certain because I don't see one graph 18 to the right to the other. So I'm going to put a question mark for that one right now. All right, C says x squared minus 18. So let's try that. x squared minus 18. Press graph. There's the first graph. There's this. They're definitely not right of each other. That can't be it. What about x squared plus 18? So let's do x plus 18. Squared, OK, so x and the 18 are both in the parentheses, and it's squared. Let's post graph. There's our x squared, which is our second graph. And the other one doesn't show up 18 units to the right. So it doesn't look like that one's it either. Let's check out E. And I put a question mark because it doesn't really show up on the graph, so it's kind of hard to tell. x squared minus 18. All right. Here's the graph of x squared minus 18. Here's the original graph. And it looks like x squared minus 18 is definitely to the right of x squared. But is it 18 units? You could count the little tick marks if you wanted to. You could also notice the vertex of x squared is 0, 0. So if the other vertex is z or excuse me, 18, 0, then we know we've shifted 18 units to the right. Let's go to our table, second graph. Let's make absolutely certain. So first graph was 0, 0, and our y1 ought to be 18, 0, if it's 18 units to the right. We look at it, we notice it's 18, 0. So that means that x minus 18 squared must be the correct answer. It's 18 units to the right of y equals x squared. OK, our last type of problem for this particular video is right here. Function p is in the form y equals a parentheses x plus c squared. What? There's no numbers there. They're just all letters except for the exponent of 2. And then it tells us the values of a and c are both less than 0. Which graph could represent p? Wow, this is a little bit weird. Somehow we're supposed to end up with a graph that matches this description, but we don't have any numbers. If you're being asked a question like this, they want to know the general form. Like, where is the parabola in general in relation to like the x and y axis? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our y equals screen. And we're going to make up some values for a and c that match the description. So the values of a and c are both less than 0. 
oh, that shouldn't be too bad. Let's just pick some values that are less than zero for A and Z. Um, a, pick some small numbers because it looks like none of these numbers on the graph go beyond six, either to the left or to the right or up or down. So I'm going to pick a small number for at first, negative two, parentheses, x, and then it says c is less than zero. Plus, let's pick a value less than zero. So um, how about negative five? Doesn't look like any of the values go much less than negative five. So x plus negative five squared. Press graph, and oops, my window's still way messed up. It's still way off to the right. If you want to go back to a standard window, you just hit zoom, the zoom button, hit the six, takes us back to a standard window, and here's what the graph should look like. It should be a parabola pointing down, pointing down, and it should be to the right of the origin. So it needs to be to the right of the origin and pointing down. Well, probably not going to be answer choice A, because answer choice A is not pointing down, so it can't be A. B is pointing down, but it's not to the right of the origin. It's right smack dab on the middle, so it can't be B. C is pointing down, it's to the right of the origin, so let's hold on to that one for a moment. And D is to the left. If this is the center of the graph, 0, 0, this one's to the left, so it can't be D. It must be answer choice C, it's both to the right and pointing down.